sadness <laughs> that I have handed sort of Susie over to the CosmoQuest empire <laughs> uh, is that now I only get to interact with her uh, as we prep the weekly space hangout and astronomy cast as opposed to sort of all the other cool stuff that uh, that she used to do with me. So, But at the same time, I know it's amazing that you're not falling to pieces so i do uh i do appreciate that yeah um so all hail susie our great emperor um yes. right so here's here's what happened like half an hour before the show i was standing uh just in uh, just outside sort of taking the air getting prepared to do the weekly space hangout and i hear this this explosion sound off you know to the to the east and i'm like that's pretty weird. And then the power goes out in my house and I, the, a few of the neighbors are out and I'm like, did your power go out? And their power went out too. So power went out just before the weekly space hangout. So no internet. So I called Chad, who's, who's our editor for doing the guide to space. And I asked him if he had internet, he did. So I hopped in the car, took all my gear over to his place. I was in his bedroom. I uh, did the weekly space hangout. It was, uh, yeah, we yeah, we were having a fail, <laughs> fail technology fail day. But now clearly my internet is back fast. We they gave uh, us a start button this time. Yeah, well, yeah. So so this is the thing, Pamela. Whatever you do, never enter the hangout before me. Okay. It I, I, it destroys it. I I did not know this. I I Susie sent me Susie. God bless Susie. Susie is yeah. fabulous, but yeah. she sent me a link and and Don't I feel press, like no 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 no. She is she is the great betrayer. She will lead you <laughs> to the life of uh, sin and evil. My, the only only accept links and invitations from me. And okay. uh, you know and well see the thing is is that normally you arrive at the last minute. So it's true. It's uh, true. so the fact that you. <laughs> that you got here um, uh, earlier than me was really a fluke. It yeah. wouldn't have happened unless we'd had a day of horrible technology fail. So I think it will be all right. Um, yeah, Susie is the great deceiver. Um, <laughs> Susie's the dark lord of Sith, says Tom Nathan. Uh yeah. Okay. So, hey, thanks everyone for joining us at this a very special episode of us. I feel like we say this a lot. A very we special do. episode of Astronomy Cast. It makes us sound like an after-school special where. Yeah. And today we will teach you how to avoid stranger danger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we need more stranger danger. Um, that's that's the part that my wife, you know, my American wife, of course, uh, is so shocked and surprised. Is like we don't all have guns. And we don't, and we like leave doors unlocked. She finds that super weird. You know, while we're in the house, we leave the door unlocked. Like it's crazy to unlock, like, because what if you have to go out of your house and you have to like <laughs> unlock the door? That is a, that's a pain, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, so anyway, that's, that's Canada for you. Uh, weather's here is great. How's the weather there? The weather here is great, but I, I was in the Czech Republic where the, the weather played with my mind. It was absolutely glorious until Sunday when I struck off on a long bike ride through the Czech countryside and got like miserably muddy and rainy while having a great day. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I went to Prague the next day and got snowed on, but all the flowers were in bloom. So I got snowed on while having hay fever and that is wrong yeah i gotta say that has been one of the problems is the uh the the allergies this yeah. year yeah they've been rough my I, I walk outside sometimes and i'm just like i'm crying i'm so sad nature is so beautiful but i'm just like <laughs> yeah Our patio is coated in yellow gunk yeah it's just i shouldn't just, have to sweep the pollen just like my eyes <laughs> um, uh, Darren Thompson asked before we start the show, I have an unrelated question. Can I make a homemade solar filter for my four inch Mac Cassegrain? If so, is it safe for the scope? You put no. the, you put the solar filter, like don't, uh, that is a very fancy computer and you a very fancy telescope and you will destroy it. But the solar filter goes at the end of the telescope, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the solar filter 
goes over the big opening. Now, now there's two ways that you might mean by make your own solar filter. If you mean go out, grab some X-rays, welding, glass. welding yeah. glass, don't, don't, don't. If you mean, can I buy a sheet of Bada solar filter from the Bada planetarium people and cut it to size? And yes, that is completely fine. But do not like. Yes. Make your own filter materials. solar filter. Yes. It's a That's special fine. kind of film. Put that in front and you should be good to go. Um, uh, we take no responsibility if your eyes are blasted out of your skull. All right, let's move on. So I've got to run like really quickly. So we're only going to have time to really just do the do the show, and then we got a we got a book. But uh, hopefully, we'll be back in normal next next week. And are and you we going have, anywhere? Nope. And we have the weekly space hangout team to thank for our theme this week because my brain had no ideas. And yeah, it's, it's a good it's, it's a good a topic. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. So, and right. I have my recording software ready to go. I, uh, are you ready to press mm -hmm. record? I'm, I'm glad one of us is organized. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I I press record. It is not recording. Oh. Not. Oh, I have to turn on my mic. What mic are you guys listening to me on? Okay, I'm gonna stop and re-record. I guess. Yeah, you do sound terrible. Actually, okay, now that let I think me, about it. Let me fix that. Okay. Um, do I sound better? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I'm pressing. Oh, you know what? I didn't say hi to people. Hold on. Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Waiting. Wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Hi, Adam Synergy, Ben Kalo, Bobby Kent, Colin James, Daniel Yount, Darren Thompson, Elad Avron, Galaxia, Janel. Uh, Janelle Duncan, Jerome Mooton, uh, and you just told me how to pronounce it, which is Mooton. Yeah, I think I got it. Um, John S., Johnny Z., Lars XYZ, Lillian Brennan, Magnus Jensen, Margo Robinson, Mark Dudley, Matt Woods, Nancy Graziano, Neil Ferguson, Phil Wilcox, Richard Strozel, Susan Murph. Hey, Susie, I guess, part of the team. Also, the great deceiver, uh, Thomas Traniker and Tom Nathan and Zach Cody. Uh, hi, everybody. Whew, that was close. I almost didn't appreciate and recognize all of the people who showed up live for this very special episode of Astronomy Cast. Actually, you know what? We have more people watching right now than we normally do, and I think that's because it's later in so the day. It, no, it's connected to the weekly space hangout. Oh, so, yeah, that's true. Right? That's true. Getting that WSH bump. If you want to start recording at this time block, we can totally do that. That is not a terrible idea, you know? Only one day a week do I have to go scrounging for internet. Yes. Could we do that? Yeah, we can totally do that. I think we just decided to do that, if everyone out there is fine with that. Um, is that too much space in one day? Because There oh, cannot be too I much know. space well, I know, in one I know, day. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right. Okay, are we ready to press record? Hmm. Yeah, I'm just like, like literally, like, like, <laughs> why, why did we not think about this earlier? Like so many times, I'm like, oh, internet for the poor, and I, you know, like some terrible internet in a hotel because I have to, I can never take four days away from internet. And now I can take six days away from internet. God, this is brilliant. Okay, we can do this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nancy says, I have to leave halfway through each show to go home from work. Well, we could do it before the show. Yeah, that's true. We can do it. You do it at 11 out. and then do Space Hangout. Mm -hmm. And you could even like overlap. Okay. Anyway, so my mind is buzzing with the possibility. So we should do the show. Here we go. Okay. I, I, I have now pressed record. It is recording. Hello, Preston. Hello, Preston. We are, uh, we are on the countdown to the final Preston episodes for for those of you out there. Uh, I'll say this during the show when we get into the notes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Astronomy Cast episode 412, The Color of the Universe. Welcome to Astronomy Cast, our weekly facts based journey through the cosmos where we help you understand not only what we know, but how we know what we know. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and with me is Dr. Pamela Gay, a professor at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, 
and the director of CosmoQuest. Hey, Pamela, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Welcome back Thank from you. Czech Republic. Yes. It, it is a beautiful country. I highly recommend it. But if you go in the spring, you may get hay fever and snow simultaneously, and that sucks. Yes. That uh, you bring all the crazy weather with you. Um, so just to let people know, we're kind of nearing the end of the Preston verse. Yeah, it's so we we started the show back in 2006 and uh we had rebecca bemrose fetter uh do some editing for us for a while i did some editing for a while i should not be allowed to do audio editing and then we hired an actual audio editor preston gibson he was an undergraduate here at siue at the time and for almost 10 years he has been the person that made our episodes sound awesome for all of you and this is his last season he's worked with us while he was an undergraduate he's worked with us while he was a graduate student he is now a full-fledged adult out in the like normal workforce and he's actually going to focus on his real career and we've been so lucky and grateful to have him stay with us through so long and uh it looks like we're now gonna have to figure out do we find a new proto preston and start the cycle all over again the cycle must continue it does but uh, we've loved preston and um yeah we're yeah. in the final countdown yep all right so what color is the universe Turns out this isn't a simple question and one that scientists have really been unable to answer until now. Uh, now this originally, the astronomers have taken a couple of cracks at the color of the universe. Uh, and it turns out it was, it was actually a lot harder to figure out than they had, uh, they had thought. So now when we're talking about color, what are we talking about? We are talking about uh, the color we're going to use because you can use this in a lot of different ways is the fully dark adapted eyeballs response when faced with non-saturating light. And so when you just like open your eyes, gaze out into the cosmos, the average color that's falling upon your retinas this is the color that we're going to be talking about right and and in talking about this color this is this is where so you get you go outside at night and you're like okay the sky's kind of midnight blue we have stars of a bunch of different colors we have galaxies of a bunch of different colors but no matter how good a picture you use you can still find darkness between the galaxies so what we're talking about is if you smear all the light out if if you took a, a inkjet printer of the universe and smudged it out before it dried, what color would you get? Okay, I'm ready. Beige. You get beige. <laughs> <laughs> is, there a, is, is there like a, pan, a Pantone number or like an RGB value we so, can get? So there, there's an RGB value and I have to admit that uh, when we relaunched CosmoQuest, we're in the process of upgrading the designs. We are going to make the background color on CosmoQuest beige of the universe. It's it's technically called cosmic latte beige. <laughs> so so what so what's the uh, what's the RGB number? I I I don't know. Oh, you don't Corey. know. Okay. All Sorry, right. my programmer Corey Corey Lehan, who makes CosmoQuest Go, he he has yeah. the RGB number. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But but it's beige. It's the color of take coffee. Have like a shot of coffee, yeah. and then the rest of it is a mug of cream, and that's the color of the universe. Okay, here you go. The hex triplet is FFF eight E seven, and the uh, RGB values uh, are. Uh, and uh, two five five two four eight two three one. So if you just do a Google search while you're listening to this for cosmic latte, uh, you know it is a sort of a you know it's the kind of color. It's a very light, uh, very light beige color. It's the kind of color that you would, as you said, you know you've you've taken your coffee, your latte, you've thrown a lot of cream into it on top of the latte already, and it's this very sort of milky white color, but a little, little, a little beige. Um, okay, great. <laughs> Why? 
Is this it that is, color? This is the reason we're doing the show. It, it would be an awful sad show if all we did was discuss beige. Beige. Yeah, no, beige. no. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> this episode of Astronomy Cast is over. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, no. <laughs> No, the, the question is like this color, you don't see this color anywhere. So why is this color the average color? It, it's the color you end up with when you add together all of the black body curves of all of the different stars at all of their different red shifts and speeds and evolutionary states and masses. It's the color you get when you add in the emission lines of all of the hot gas. It's the color you get when you then subtract things out with all of the cold gas that is is creating absorption lines. Add all that together, and it gives you this, this spectra, which tells you how much energy you expect to find at each different color. And once you have that spectra, we have the technology to turn that into, well, you could do it with a Hugh Phillips light bulb if you wanted to. But more to the point, we also know our eyes' response to these different colors. So then you start getting into the given someone with a completely normal set of eyeballs. So um, someone who's not color blind, someone who's not tetrachromal, if you look at what their chemical response to this color would be, what would they see? And the answer is beige. And I love the idea that that you're going to be making the the background color of CosmoQuest that color, which is brilliant. And you're, if you, I I may steal that idea too and make that the background color of Universe today, because it that's that is the best idea, and it's like a super Easter egg that people won't even realize that it is truly the color of the universe. And it is eggshell colored, actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, okay, so. So those are the those are the photons that are falling on your eyeballs, but that's sort of like what we would perceive in the right. visible spectrum, right? Is that a true understanding of the average wavelength of all of the photons that are that are falling on us from around the universe? And and this is the thing is there's a difference between the perceived color in the very biased human eyeballs we have and the average color of the universe. So when you start getting into, well, what's the average color of the universe? You have to deal with the fact that there's this cosmic microwave background in the background of everything that's just that leftover light from when the cosmic microwave background formed. It's, it's microwave light. It's light that the eyeball absolutely cannot see. Then we also have this background of, of gamma ray emission that's, that's coming from it's its own various sources, all of the hot gas that's out there. And, and so then you start getting into the, well, expletive. What am I taking the average or the mean of? Am I looking at what is by numbers the uh, average photon has this energy? It has this wavelength. How am I figuring it out? Do I want to use the mean instead? And, and, the truth is there's a whole lot more cold universe out there giving off infrared, radio, all of these colors that we can't see with our eyeballs. So by numbers, the universe is going to be dominated by all of these cold red sources. By energy, it doesn't take a whole lot of hot x-ray emissions to, to have a higher energy than the eyeball can see. Now, one of the things that I find super interesting is that this is this is sort of a snapshot in time that you could yes. look at this color and a future astronomer could go, oh, you were living around the 13.8 billion year time frame of the of the universe. So if we were living at an earlier stage in the in the universe, what you know, what would that what would that average color turn into? So, so it all depends on exactly when in the past you go. And there was a really cool paper that came out over the summer where they were talking about uh, how we are essentially past peak energy in our universe and everything's just going downhill from here. So there was a point in the far past where things in general were lower energy if you grabbed any given cubic volume of space. Uh, so you go back to the cosmic dark ages when everything was a 
boring, bland, neutral gas. And it's a low energy state giving off basically 21 centimeter radio emission in a lot of cases. Um, fast forward, you start having stars turn on and suddenly the universe is filled with young, hot, blue stars. We have ultraviolet radiation coming out, destroying things left and right, ionizing radiation. And this is what lights up what ionizes our universe. So we went from radio. Yeah, yeah it's very radio colored. It's very 21 centimeter colored. To, to, wow, everything's getting a sunburn, UV colored to settling down through the blues and the visual spectrum. And, and now we've hit the point where things are more on the reddish side of beige. Of beige. So in the, so in the past, and I actually have got a pretty cool picture here. I don't know if you've seen this one. There's one that shows you sort of what it would look like the color in the past and it's blue. And then into the future, it sort of turns back to even more of a like a salmony color as it gets back into the into the reds as you get as all these stars age and and all, all the blue stars that's pulling it back to the middle of the spectrum are gone and dead and and we're just going to get redder and deader from here on out there will be individual bursts of blue our our own galaxy when it decides that it's going to become one with andromeda and we form milk dromeda there will be this wild burst of star formation in this collision process so locally we'll be super blue at that point but that's locally as a whole our universe is red and dead now, this color, I mean, this is pretty silly and and it, you know, has other purposes beyond just what to color your, your space website. When astronomers look at the color of objects out in the universe, that color, that average color tells them a ton of stuff, right? Like if you right. look at a, you know, if I look at, say, a galaxy cluster and I, and I figure out what the average color of that cluster is, what is that telling me? So, so this is actually something I studied with my doctoral work. There's this really neat trend. It's called the butcher Omler effect, where on, on mass, when you look at fairly large but not huge clusters of galaxies in the past, they're much bluer. They have a lot more star formation going on. Blue means star formation. But as you get more and more into the modern universe, what you're seeing is, well, those same fairly massive but not huge galaxy clusters, they're getting redder and redder over time. And what's happening is all of the stuff that gets used in star formation is through interactions getting gradually stripped out of the galaxies and used up and we're running out of star formation in these systems. Now, if you look at groups like our own local group, low mass groups of galaxies. Um, they're blue. They're just always blue because we're not interacting with one another very often. We're kind of standoffish. And without these interactions, we're not getting our gas stripped out of us. We get to stay active blue galaxies. It's going to change slowly over time, but it takes time. And what's even more awesome is these massive, massive galaxy clusters, they pretty much instantly went red. And this is because so much interaction was going on. These massive systems of galaxies that are whipping around at much higher speeds and higher speeds, more density, all of this means more collisions, more, we use horrible words, it's called ram pressure stripping and galaxy harassment. Basically more stuff that's removing the gas and dust out of these galaxies. So less star formation from the beginning of time. So we can tell star formation by looking at the color of galaxies. And then one of the other factors that comes into play is that over time, these galaxies and galaxy clusters are moving away from us, right? And so once again, you look at those colors to, to get a sense about their velocity. Right. So if I look at an individual star or an individual type of galaxy that I know typically what kind of color it would have, <laughs> Um, when I look at it, I may find that it's a radically different color. And then when I start sampling different parts of the spectra, that's where I get the details. I can go, oh, this, this 
a Lyman alpha line that should normally be out in the ultraviolet that's the two to one transition in hydrogen. It's suddenly over here where I can see it in the visual that blue light has all gotten shifted to the red and this galaxy that normally should have been much more blue is now appearing a pretty red color or beige as it turns out most galaxies appear when you take pictures of them and the color is thus when we sample different parts of the black body spectrum it's telling us the speed, the recessional speed, the Doppler shifting that this galaxy is participating in. And we can even get a sense of that as we watch them rotate. We can tell how fast they're rotating again, the way that that color changes. And, and what's really cool, especially if you're studying supermassive black holes, so you have this, this disk-like galaxy and, and in this case, I have a non-spherical disk-like uh, whiteboard galaxy that those of you watching live get to see me rotating. So if you imagine um, a small disk, a plate, a tiny desk whiteboard, when you hold it up so that you're looking at its edge, when you rotate it, and this is why I like using a rectangle, I can see one side of the rectangle is moving towards my eyes and the other side is moving away. And the side that's moving towards my eyes, it gets blue shifted. The side that's away from me gets red shifted. And the rate at which things are moving in an actual galaxy, which isn't held together as a plate, um, the center is rotating way faster because it's down close to that supermassive black hole. So when you look at the shifting color across it, you have slightly blue shifted, more and more blue shifted, massively blue shifted as you get down into the center. And then right next to that, massively red shifted, and then a little less red shifted, a little left red shifted. And so we can get at how big is that supermassive black hole just by looking at the amount of shifting that occurs deep down in the center of that galaxy. Yeah, it's amazing how precise that that is. I mean, this this concept of looking at the color and averaging of the color and looking at what you would expect to what you see, it's a very precise tool that astronomers use for some of their their most deep understandings about what things are made of, all kinds of things. It's it's a really impressive technique. And, yes, and and kind of made frivolous by uh, oh, is it drum and remember the people who actually who came up with this and i don't know if you remember when that color was sort of first proposed but they actually they made a mistake was, yeah they thought it was green right <laughs> well they didn't just think it was green they thought that it was it was this kind of like toothpastey turquoise on a bad day kind of left your gum to dry in the yeah. car kind of color yeah. nine c f f c e if you've got your uh, <laughs> color palette in front of you if you're if you got you if you need it in hexadecimal and and what what the problem was is they were simulating this for how it would look for the human eyeball and they screwed up their white point and any of you who are a photographer know you have to adjust your white point otherwise things appear to be a false color so you sh you hold up that piece of whatever that has the white, the black, the couple of intermediate shades of gray, and this allows you to color correct your images. Well, you also have to color correct when you're simulating colors. And they started with a white that was too pink and it just cascaded horrifically into a false color interpretation. That's that's pretty hilarious. And I, I remember we actually ran that story, we ran the original one, and I it was, you know, like, oh, the universe yeah. is green. And then we're like, no, wait, it's latte colored. Yep. Uh, some great names here. Uh, uh, Cappuccino Cosmico, Big Bang Buff, uh, Cosmic <laughs> Cream, uh, Astronomer Almond, uh, Skyvery, which I like. <laughs> Univage, which I like. I, I, I like Univage. Yeah, Univage is good. Uh, Primordial Clam Chowder. Cosmic khaki. <laughs> so, so they put the the name out to vote, and a bunch of members at the uh, Johns Hopkins University uh, came up with uh, astronomers voted for the different the different names, and in the end, uh, the the latte one was the one that was that was selected. 
And and as someone powered by coffee, I have my my grumpy coffee today. As someone powered by by coffee, I deeply appreciate that we live in a cosmic latte colored universe. In, in a coffee in a coffee colored uh, coffee colored universe. Um, cool. Well, you know what? I actually have nothing else to say on this subject. I literally like, unless unless you've got something super interesting, we may need to just wrap astronomy cast up at this part at this point. I I think that is completely fine and let's encourage everyone to go out and um enjoy a cosmic beige night out under the stars galaxies and everything else and um hey we're still continuing to think about what we're going to do for the eclipse we are doing something in st louis it is going to be a primary hotel where we have events during the day um, we're still securing the rooms as well as recommended uh, rollover hotels. And I'm going to find a camping ground because I heard you when you guys said that you wanted some of you to be able to camp. So we're working, getting those details. I just want to let you all know we are in the process of beginning the planning. And, um, you know, hotels don't want to let you reserve things more than a year out. So yeah. we'll, have, we'll have info as soon as we can. A uh, big thanks to Helg Bjorkog from uh, the WSH crew, I think, who suggested this idea for this week's topic, uh, just to show you that we do uh, love to listen to your ideas for show ideas. And there's been been some wonderful uh, suggestions in the last couple of weeks, many of which we have stolen, and many of which it's we true. are going to be going to be rolling out soon. So if you have ideas for the show for Astronomy Cast, and you have some topics now. We've done 412 shows, so so, <laughs> so double check. First. So double check, yeah. And the way to double check, I do this all the time, uh, is I go to to Google and I type in Astronomy Cast, and then I type in the the idea for the show, and then I'm like, oh no, we definitely covered galaxy clusters. Oh no, we covered yeah. rally scattering. But if you know, if you find something that we haven't done, uh, we would love to to cover some of your topics. So. And yeah, this show is made for you guys, and. Uh, you thank you for helping you. awesome all right thanks pamela thanks everyone for uh listening this week and we'll see you all next week yay okay and now we save and the now most save. exciting part of the show save project save project do that one locally don't do both into the dropbox okay yeah uh we're gonna do some tests of a new stream i know i keep threatening this but now we're really really gonna do it so we're gonna be uh testing out new software um saturday i think maybe next week well chad's gonna do a bunch of tests and then if that okay. works then we're gonna we're gonna go the route and not do the hangouts on air anymore we'll go another oh route God. i know i know i know i would it's, it's i feel like like there's run we're in the Arctic, and uh, yeah. we're we're polar bears as our as our ice is breaking up around us. So we're going to move something, and hopefully, then we can get onto Twitch. We can get on Facebook Live. Yeah. We can get onto Periscope. You can enjoy uh, Astronomy Cast wherever you want. The other thing is, uh, I've been having a lot of fun with Snapchat. So I don't know if you play with Snapchat panel, and don't you roll your eyes at me. I'm not is... rolling my eyes. I'm doing Another the. Damn I know. No, no, it's more to the point of we get enough dick pics on Twitter. <laughs> you know what? Snapchat is is super fun. And and uh like check out what um Evo is doing. Check out Evo Terra's yeah, feed. Evo is on, fabulous. He's super funny. Yeah, he's like traveling around in Thailand. He posts these stories every day of all this kind of crazy stuff that he sees. It's super fun. So anyway, uh, I'm F. Keen on Snap Snapchat, and uh, I hope to do a lot more Snapchattery shortly. So okay, there you go. I, I I'm on Instagram finally. So. Instagram is so 2015. Pamela, can you please get with the times? All the cool kids were on were on Snapchat now. <laughs> so, right? you, you would the, the way you tend to share stuff it would be awesome on snapchat i promise you okay all right um probably star strider is what you'll probably be on snapchat but yeah. you know who knows uh okay cool well i gotta run so we don't have a lot of time to do any questions let me see if there's like any super urgent question because we sort of wrap that up
Um, I'm going to download Snapchat. Uh, people want to know, is this your office at SIU, Epam? Yes, yes, this is. And yeah. I have a, a poor, innocent graduate student sitting. I'm going to now embarrass him. I have, H not Houston, I have Austin. I have another grad student named Houston. I need a Dallas. Uh, he's sitting over here quietly working on graphics. And um, yeah, so he's he's been a mouse the entire time while I'm working. And... Um, um, Someone uh, note to look a little sleepy. Uh, have yes. you? You're way uh, jet lag right now, right? My my body currently thinks it's two a.m. and it's like seven thousand percent humidity here, so my hair exploded. So you have me jet lagged with exploding hair. You are a hero. Um, let's see if there's any other questions here. But if you if you want to see pictures of Prague, check me out on Instagram. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. I got to run out the door. Uh, let us know, though. Do you like us smashing the Space Hangout and Astronomy Cast into one longer Block recording? Um, uh, ben Moss Woodard says, I look a little sunburned. No, sun tanned. We got the garden happening. I'm outside now all the time. We're back, baby. Summer is back. And, uh, and he has lights that make him look pink. Yeah, it's true. But still, no, I've been out in the sun a lot, and I'm so happy to, to have gotten through the winter. And my wife, uh, my Texan wife is a little... Uh, she. This may be the last uh, winter she's ever willing to experience on the west coast oh, of Canada. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, "Oh, that was the worst." And I, tr I thought that I uh, prepared her. I'm like, "I just gotta let you know, it's awful. It rains. It's terrible. It's the worst. Summers are beautiful. It, the sun comes out in mid-April and stays till mid-October, and we have great time. And then for the rest of the time, it's like it just never stops raining. It's the worst." So. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, Galaxia wants to know gardening. Um, we, so Carla, my wife, uh, is a macro photographer and so she gets pictures of bugs. And so the gardening that we do is to bring bugs to the, to the property that and is so all of the stuff. It's hilarious. So like the, you know, like we have flowers obviously to bring in the bees yeah. and stuff like that but then we have all Just these sacrificial mantises no we have a, we have a kind of mantid on the island that that is in the family but they're more on the south okay end of the island we have giant praying mantises and they are awesome and violent I wish, I wish. yeah i remember i was i was in uh, atlanta and we were at like at dragon con and there and i saw my first praying mantis in the wild and i'm like oh my god it's a praying mantis and i went over to pick one up and uh, and so I was like, don't do that, don't do that. They, they will cut you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they are evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're actually pretty uh, you know, they'll 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 give you a good slicing on your uh on your uh on your hand. So that was hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh yeah, you should check out her stuff. She's gonna kill me, but you should check out her feed she's on Instagram. Flicker. Yeah, she's on check on Instagram. So okay. Carla Carla Thompson, just Carla with a K, and uh she's got these really great photos. So check them out. Cool. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to uh, wrap it up. Thanks to everyone for watching, um, and we'll see you all next week. I will see you all later.